Mr. Truck TV here, MrTruck.com. We are still at SEMA 2014, and there's a Ford booth here, which is actually the body shop side of it, or the part you help body shops with. And this is Paul Massey. Massey, not a hard name to remember. And you're with uh, which part of Ford? I'm with Ford Customer Service Division, and this is where we uh, assist both our dealers and independent body shops getting ready for the new 2015 F-150. You're not just using Ford body shops, you're training all the body shops. Yeah, we want to make sure that our customers can get this vehicle repaired where they go today. And a good portion of our customers go to independent body shops. So the program really will help both dealer body shops and independent body shops that currently work on the truck continue to work on it into the future. Oh, that's great. Okay, so it's a whole new approach to help the, the, the body shops get ready. Right. So that everything goes smoothly if there is a collision kind of thing going on. Well, cool. Well, you've got this well laid out here. Now, the, you can go ahead and show me what, what's different about this. Well, this whole truck is made out of high strength, military grade aluminum alloy, the upper body portion. The frame is uh, high strength steel. Uh, the dashboard in here has a uh, quiet steel section but all the rest of it is the high strength military grade aluminum alloy. Uh, some of the things that we've done to help with repairability of the product is uh, this year with this, with this model uh, the uh, apron tube here has been changed from the current model. So the current model the, the apron tube actually goes into the firewall and you have to remove the dash oh, in yeah. order to break the, the welds to remove this section. With this model, everything is uh, accessible from the outside, so you don't have to drop the dash. That's about a six to eight hour savings. Yeah, I can see that being a big deal. Now that looks, that, this yellow part here is a solid piece, well, it's aluminum. This is all high strength military very, aluminum alloy. That's very yeah. thick aluminum. Now this is yeah. the thickest piece of aluminum on the whole body, because I, I can't imagine anything being thicker than that. It, it is pretty thick. I couldn't tell you if it's the thickest, though. That's either. for the collision side of things. Well, this, this is a, a structural part. This holds on the fenders and okay. the wheel wells and, and the other parts of the vehicle. So it is a structural component of the vehicle. Okay. Yes. Well, that's, that's cool. Now, I mean, we want to talk about rivets and some other things. You've got aluminum floor pan, aluminum A, B, C pillars. Is that a rivet or I'm not sure what that is? That's a flow-through uh, uh, screw. So the majority of the vehicle is assembled using self-piercing rivets, and all of the plants will be upgraded uh, so we'll be removing the spot welding equipment and we'll be installing the new Henrob self-piercing rivets but when you uh, and then there's also these flow through skrill, uh, screws and what they do is they're put in at such a speed that they actually weld the materials together oh, Wow! so yeah. when they're removed to repair then they go back with a hemlock rivet which is what you see on the outside of the vehicle here Self-piercing screws, that sounds fast, but you got to be fast to build these. Yeah, well, they, they have robots that will actually do all of the riveting like the old spot welders used to do. Well, that makes sense. I was wondering about that. I'm going to have to go back to manual, but no, I, I like that idea. And I guess you can show us some of the other rivets that are on this body. So what, what some of these uh, color-coded parts really show is different repair procedures. So the current model vehicle has a lot of high-strength steels in it. Um, with this being a... Um, aluminum product there are sectioning procedures that are now available that weren't available on the old truck um, so you can uh, section for example here uh, in the floor pan you can see some of these cross members where there's a sectioning uh, approved repair with the old or the current model vehicle you would literally have to replace the whole floor pan yeah and so there's savings again there uh, by uh, by doing these sectioning repairs um, and again, this is all to help hold down the cost of ownership. We expect that this vehicle will be competitive uh, with the current vehicles in the market. For price and for time it takes to repair them. 
Well, that's good because everybody has those questions about aluminum. Sure. It's like we just invented it, even though you know all the European cars have it. You know, for Ford Division used to be Jaguar, and you know they were all into aluminum. So you guys have known quite a bit about aluminum for a long time now. But we, no, this there's is quite a bit of aluminum in, in in many of our vehicles already. We've had aluminum in some of our hoods back to 1997. The current model uh, F-150 has an aluminum hood. The new Mustang will have an aluminum hood and fender. So there's quite a bit of aluminum already out in the industry. Cool. Can you show me these different other, the other kind of rivets you have? Uh, well, so this would be a self-piercing rivet, right, which is a flat rivet up there at the top. So this B-pillar can be replaced without having to remove the roof. Oh. And when you install it, you would put it back together with both the self-piercing rivets and then the hemlock rivets here. And that's what you see up there at the top. And then those obviously are all covered by the skin. Right, right. Well, that means almost everything that you're, that's attaching to itself is aluminum, so you don't have to worry about any kind of an oxidation or rust between a steel and aluminum. It's aluminum until you get to the frame and then that's isolated. Right. Well, you, you would use in the, uh, most of these repairs, there would be uh, rivets and then also um, adhesives. And so the adhesives also pr provide some protection there. They uh, help bond it. Um, all of the structural parts will come with um, uh, uh, installation instructions which we've got displayed over there and they'll not only tell the uh, technician how to install it but what rivets go in what locations and where the adhesives should go so uh, something new that we haven't done in the past but that's to help ensure that the collision industry can perform a proper repair and they'll have the instructions right with the parts as they order them. Well, that's great. Well I know the uh, adhesives have been around for a long time you guys use that on the old ones too the sheet metal so that's not necessarily new but uh, what else, is there anything else on the back of this that's different other than your, I mean I like the idea that you can take one component at a time and you know a body industry gets bad about yeah. tearing a whole cab off and wanting you to buy everything. No, the, yeah, a lot of the parts will be sold as sections and, and uh, can be installed and again uh, uh, what aluminum allows you to do is to do some of the sectioning repairs that you can't do on a high strength steel type product. There are certain points that you can't heat the high strength metals or they lose their strength. Yes, your tip right? all gone. The aluminum is, is, is different in that it, it allows you to come in in certain sections and weld it and retain that, uh, that strength. All the metal on the, on the sides here, because it's lighter, it's been upgaged and um, it's uh, more dent resistant than the current steel is. Yeah, I've heard on the, on the bed they've had to make the floor at least and a lot of it thicker. Right. And what the original plan was, they keep making it stronger, which is a good thing. I guess we'll know more as it goes on, but I know there's a lot of reinforcing channels in there. Now, notice on this floor beam, this is like almost like a subfloor. You got a riveted side, you got a welded side. Is that just like the old type, or is that how you can do it? You got welding and riveting yeah, there. This was done to show the repairers that there are different procedures that they could use in the same repair. Oh, so they could repair. go either way. They, they could go either way. So okay. if the shop is more comfortable with the rivets and the adhesives, they can do a butt joint that way and they can do a section or if they have the welding capabilities and they prefer to go with the welding they can uh, perform that repair that way also and those techniques will be taught in the ICAR courses that we've uh, teamed up with ICAR on to actually help with the training for this vehicle. Well, that's, I think that's such a good idea to get the, the body industry involved in this because you know that's always the, that's probably the biggest question about this truck is the aluminum side of it. We all know it saves weight but uh, now we know that you know it's not going to be a big deal getting it repaired, and that's what uh, the biggest question I get on these trucks is. That, that's, so that's, that's great. Been our goal before the vehicle was even officially approved to be aluminum. We had we've been working on this since 2009 to ensure that we could could work with the industry, develop processes and solutions, so that the collision industry would be able to repair this vehicle just as easily as the current model vehicle. Well, good. That makes sense. Still anybody from Boeing or any of those jet fighter guys? They use a lot of aluminum. I know there's a bunch of those, uh, what are those called, the uh, space shuttle guys that are yeah. doing nothing now. Get a few of them involved. Oh, this is cool. Well, thanks a lot. You bet. I appreciate right, your thanks. time. We're here at SEMA 2014.